what's up? So Pokemon Sword and Shield is less than one week away, and I hope you guys are as excited as I am. As much as there have been some questionable choices and a lot of controversy, I for one am just excited to explore a new region and a new set of Pokemon. And what I thought we could do to get ready for that is rank all of the Sword and Shield Pokemon that have been revealed so far. So I'll basically just be doing this list off of the looks of the Pokemon as well as their typing and anything else that may happen to influence what I think of them. And then the last thing I do just gotta say is if you guys do want to see more Pokemon content, I absolutely need your support. So if you could please watch all the way through, leave a like, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe. That would be super, super helpful. I'm really enjoying these videos and I'd like to do more, but uh, I can't really do it without your guys' support. So that would be great. Anyways. Let's do this. Now, starting in at our number 24 spot as the lowest ranked Pokemon on this list, we have Impidimp. I don't like this guy at all. I don't wanna see him, I don't wanna hear him, I don't even wanna think about this guy. It's a stupid looking dark fairy and I don't like it. Then moving on to 23, we've got the flying water Pokemon, Cremorant. Now, I'm certainly not opposed to the typing or really even the overall aesthetic of this Pokemon, but I do have one major problem. Th this is Gen 8 Pelipper. And I don't know about you guys, but if there's any big Gen 3 fans out there, I think we can all agree that Pelipper sucks. So nice try, Gen 8 Pelipper, but uh, I see through your disguise. Now moving on to 22, we have Dreadnought. So this is a water rock type, which I really have no problem with. My biggest thing is just that this feels like a bootleg Blastoise to me. It's also got a Gigantamax version, which really doesn't do a lot for it. Overall, it just feels like a bit of an unoriginal Pokemon and um, yeah, I don't like it. Now moving on to number 21, we've got Poltegeist. Not only is this a pure ghost Pokemon, I'm guessing it's going to be a pure gimmick Pokemon. Funny puns aside, I'm, I'm really not a fan of this one, but I, I could also see it having potential, maybe. If it's got maybe two more evolutions, it could possibly get cool, but I, I don't like this thing. Now, moving on to number 20, we've got the electric type Pokemon, Yamper. So is this like the, the Gen 8 Pikachu? I, uh, may, maybe that's what this is trying to be. It's, it's hard to say. If it's got two or more evolutions, it could have some potential, but in this form, I, I don't really like it. Don't even really think it's that cute, to be honest. <laughs> So another Pokemon I would say maybe keep your eyes peeled for when we get some, some new information on its evolutions, but this version, not, not my cup of tea, if you will. Why didn't I think of that joke for, for Poltegeist? I'm stupid. <laughs> now moving on to our number 19 spot, we've got a Pokemon that's a little bit too sweet for me and it's Al Creamy. Now this pure fairy type Pokemon is also a little bit gimmicky looking. I gotta say it looks a little bit tasty. Uh, the one thing I do like about it though is the Gigantamax version. It goes from being a little dessert to a gigantic wedding cake. Probably not gonna be my favorite Pokemon of the series, but I, ga I gotta give it credit. You know, it's um, it's original and it also takes good advantage of the new form. Now, moving on to number 18, we've got Gossifleur, the grass type Pokemon. And at 17, we have Eldegoss. Now, I'm assuming that Eldegoss is the final evolution of Gossifleur, but I'm really hoping that there is another one beyond this. Elda kind of sounds like Elder, and overall, I actually think there's some potential here. It's hard to know. I mean, if this Pokemon's really good, I, I think I could get behind it. I've never been a huge fan of the grass type, so it it's not really my go-to, but you know, I, I can get behind this. Only time will tell, so I'm gonna rank it fairly low, but I definitely don't hate this one. Now, moving on to number 16, we've got Duraludon. Duraludon? Duraludon. So, um, what I like about this Pokemon is the typing, Dragon Steel. There's only one other Dragon Steel in the game and it's a legendary, uh, is it Palkia? No, nope, it is Dialga, actually. Um, so this is the first non-legendary Dragon Steel. So just with the typing alone, this thing is going to be really good. Dragon Steel types are completely immune to poison and resistant to normal flying rock, bug, steel, water, electric, psychic, and times or a quarter uh, to grass. So this is probably going to be really good, but I honestly just think it looks stupid. Don't love the look of it, but I know it's gonna be an absolute beast, so I kind of placed it in the middle. Moving on to number 15, we've got Roly Coley. Okay, okay. Okay. This is a Pokemon that I feel like has got some potential. As a pure rock type, I'm getting major Geodude vibes, but I, I think they could take this in an interesting and unique way. So overall, I'm excited to see what this Pokemon can do. Now, moving on to our number 14 spot, we've got more Pico. Um, 
definitely a, a, a Pikachu clone. So this is an electric dark type with a very interesting ability. Every single turn, it switches between the electric themed one and the dark themed one. I'm curious to see exactly how this is going to work out. Um, so I didn't rank it extremely high. It's probably a pretty gimmicky Pokemon, but I'm interested to see more of this guy. So kind of middle of the pack. Moving on to number 13, we have Galarian Weezing. So in my last video, I talked about how Galarian Weezing shouldn't be fairy type. And a lot of people mentioned that basically what he does is sucks in poison gas and filters it out to make clean gas. Okay, I, I, I didn't know that. I don't mind Galarian Weezing, and overall, just because he is Weezing, I can't really hate him. So, once again, middle of the pack. Now, at number 12, we have Wooloo. <laughs> okay, so this is just a, a normal type Pokemon that's a sheep. I know, I know, it's it's really, really basic, but, but, but hear me out. Honestly, I got nothing. I just think it's really cute and I like it. But you know, if I had to put my money on it, I would say that this Pokemon's probably going to evolve into Mewtwo, so it's gotta be good. Now, moving on to number 11, we have the lad himself, Surfetched. So this Pokemon is basically just Galarian Farfetch'd, but they actually gave him a name. And uh, I gotta say, huge improvement. I love that his weapon is like the big leak. It's just, it's, it's so good. And this is coming from someone who never liked Farfetch'd. Um, I think it's a fun take. So coming in at our number 10 spot, we have Galarian Zigzagoon. And then at number nine, we have Galarian Linu. So my actual preference really doesn't put these guys here, um, but the reason I did was for their evolution, which is a new evolution in this generation, and it is Obstagoon. Honestly, just a really, really cool take on, on this family of Pokemon. I was gonna put Galarian, Linoon, and Zigzagoon low, but I thought it would make more sense just to put them here so that I could talk about all of them together. I mean, they look almost the exact same as their originals, but Obstagoon is very cool. It's a dark normal family, which isn't really probably the best typing, um, rip to fighting, but overall, I, I, I like the look and I'm, I'm falling over. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool look. Now, moving into number seven, we're getting into some really cool Pokemon here, and this is Corval Knight. Okay. First of all, it's a flying steel type. What more do you want? Shout out to my fans of Skarmory, classic Pokemon. I'm really excited for this thing. It's like an evil looking steel raven. It is awesome. On top of that, it's got a very cool Gigantamax form. So I like that as well. And I really hope that this Pokemon isn't too hard to catch because I think I'm definitely going to put it in my team for my first playthrough. Now coming in at our number six spot, um, we're just gonna do all the starters in a row. I thought it would be good to put them all together just so we can talk about all of them as a whole unit. Um, and coming in at number six, we have the grass type Grookey. For the most part, I think it really just comes down to the fact that I've never really been a big grass type fan. I love Decidueye. Um, obviously Bulbasaur is a classic, but pretty much everything else, uh, just, uh, not a fan. Now at number five, we have the fire type Scorbunny. Score Bunny. It's a pretty cool Pokemon, and I do gotta say that I'm excited to see where this one goes. But, I mean, come on, the top starter Pokemon has gotta be Sobble. Listen, Sobble gang all the way. If you don't agree with me, I'm sorry, but you're just, you're just wrong. The water type Pokemon of the starter trio gotta be the best um, for no other reason than he just looks like a G and he's water type. Now we've got three Pokemon left. So coming in at our number three spot, we've got Zama, Zenta. I hope I said that right. This is the Shield legendary Pokemon and the mascot for Pokemon Shield. And really the only reason I don't want to get Pokemon Shield. Now don't get me wrong, I really like Zamazenta, but, and coming in at our number two spot, Zacian, 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 the sword Pokemon is way cooler. Because I suck at their names, I'm just gonna say the Shield legendary Pokemon is just way more lame compared to the sword. Zacian's just a really cool looking wolf holding a sword and I, and I love it. Overall, I wouldn't say that these legendaries are my favorites, but I kind of had to rank them high just because they are legendaries. Now, I for one, I'm going to be getting Pokemon Shield, but uh, Zacian is like the only reason why I want to get Sword. But the true reason that I got to go with Shield is for my number one pick, and that is Galarian Ponyta. So look, I think we can all accept this Pokemon looks like a fairy, but at the end of the day, I really don't care. This is a psychic type Pokemon, and personally, I think psychics are way cooler. And on top of that, it looks incredible. It's just such a cool looking Pokemon, and I've always loved the aesthetic of Ponyta, but it's just not a viable fire Pokemon. But maybe Galarian Ponyta and Galarian Rapidash as psychics will be 
awesome. And Galarian Ponyta is the reason why I'm getting Pokemon Shield. Also because Larvitar, Pupitar, and Tyranitar are Shield exclusives and, well, you know, Gen 2 gang. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is our list. Let me know what you guys thought of this. Um, let me know what Pokemon game you are getting, Sword or Shield, and uh, yeah. I'm hopefully gonna be able to crank out one more Pokemon video before the game comes out, and then um, probably gonna be putting out a lot more content. So if you guys do wanna see more Pokemon content in general, make sure to subscribe, uh, leave a like, and if you're here, then thank you for watching all the way through. You guys are absolute legends. Um, thank you so much again. I will talk to you later. Peace out, you freaking nerds. Thank you.